you are fearfully and wonderfully made. And the God of the heavens is the one who fashioned you together. And he knows your name tonight. And he knows every single thing there is to know about you. And he's made you a promise that for those who trust in him, he will literally hold them in his hand and carry them all the days of their life. This Psalm 33 that talks about a star-breathing God turns an interesting corner. It says, For he spoke and it came to be. He commanded and it stood fast. That's power and awe. But now it gets very personal. From heaven the Lord looks down and sees all mankind. From his dwelling place he watches all who live on earth. He who forms the hearts of them all and is intimately acquainted with everything they do. And then he goes even further. And he says, the eyes of the Lord are on those who fear him, on those who hope in his unfailing love. And here comes his promise to deliver them from death and to keep them alive in famine. And that is the promise tonight because this building and our world is filled with hurting people, with lives that are spinning out of control, with pain that we, don't, we didn't ask for or could never imagine. And God is making a promise to us tonight. He's saying, I am a universe maker and I am a heart former, but I'm also big enough to be intimately acquainted with all the circumstances of every one of your lives. And I promise you, no matter what comes in this lifetime, no matter how difficult the road or how dark the night, I will hold on to you and I will literally hold you together and carry you through any and every circumstance that ever comes your way any moment on this planet. It's the promise of God. And you say, well, man, that sounds good, but how do I know that's true of my life right now, Louis? I mean, that's really what we want to know tonight. And I'll tell you how you can know tonight that God will always hold you together no matter what. It's by looking a little deeper into the human body and it's a little protein molecule called laminin. And that's about what I felt the first time I heard that. Long story short, the tour was winding down last time around. We were in Tyler, Texas. The night was over. A guy walks up to me. I wish I could tell you the whole story. It was so of God. Introduces himself to me. He says, how are you doing? I just want to say hello. I said, it's nice to meet you. He says, you guys winding the tour down. Uh, where are you going to go from here? I said, well, I'm on my way back home to Atlanta, Georgia. He said, well, what's next for you? I said, I'm going to be preaching the next two Sundays for my pastor back in Atlanta. He said, oh, cool. What are you preaching on? I said, well, the series is on the glory of God in the human body. He said, that's really amazing. I'm a molecular biologist at the university down the road. G give me your talk. And I was like, oh, wow. I wasn't quite yet ready to unload the talk for a molecular biologist. So I kind of stumbled through what I had and he's kind of being kind and gracious and like, uh-huh, that's good. And then he says, well, what's your big left hook? You gotta have a left hook, a big finish, right? I said, I don't have a left hook yet. He said, oh, Louie, oh man, your left hook is laminin. And I'm, I'm totally blank on laminin. And he goes, Louie, it's a cell adhesion molecule, protein molecule. Do you know about proteins? I'm like, no. He said, Louis, cells organize into certain molecular structures and that determines what protein there are. There are between 10 and 60,000 proteins in the human body. We don't even know how many proteins are in the human body. But one of them is a cell adhesion molecule. It's organized into this certain structure and that tells the cell what its job is in the body. And this one is a cell adhesion molecule. And I'm like, all right. He said, no, Louie, it's like the rebar of the human body. The steel they put in the concrete when they lay the foundations of things, it's that stuff. It's, it's holding your membranes together. It's the glue of the human body, Louie. It's laminin. You've got to tell them about laminin. And I'm like, 
I promise you, I'm going home and tell them about laminin. And I'm sure when I do, revival is going to sweep across the church and probably around the world when I tell them. He said, no, 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 no. You've got to see laminin. I'm like, okay. Let's see it. He said, no, no, no. You need to go look it up online. You need to go Google laminin. I'm like, I don't even know how to spell laminin. <laughs> Takes his card out. He writes on the back, L-A-M-I-N-I-N. Okay, I cannot wait to get to my computer and get on Google, click on images, type in laminate, and I'm waiting, and these little thumbnails come up on the screen, and I'm like, wow, that's laminin? The cell adhesion molecule. Woo! <laughs> I am so excited. I am beside myself. I cannot believe what I'm seeing. I love laminin. I'm so fired up. <laughs> you should see laminin, I guess. That's the thing, right? Okay. Here is a scientific diagram of the laminin cell adhesion molecule that's holding your body together right now. Okay, this is what I found right here. No, come on. That's crazy. <laughs> that's just crazy. I can't believe it. I emailed that guy back so fast, I'm like, wow, 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 what in the world? He said, you want to see an actual laminin molecule? I'm like, oh no, man, the diagram was cool for me. I'm happy with that. Don't, don't bother sending anything else. I'm like, yes! And he sends me this image, an electron microscopic image of an actual laminin protein molecule. It looks just like this. I'm like, how crazy is that? That the stuff that holds our bodies together, that's holding the lining of your organs together, holding your skin on, is in the perfect shape of the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. And immediately I'm thinking about the words of Paul in Colossians 1. You know this beautiful passage where Paul's talking about the supremacy of Christ and the sufficiency of Christ. He says, for by him, talking about Jesus Christ, all things have been created, things in heaven and things on earth. All things were created by Jesus and for Jesus. But then the next verse goes on to say this. It's crazy. And he, Jesus, is before all things. And in him, that is, in Jesus Christ, all things hold together. That's right. It's right there. I'm like, of course they do. Of course they do. Everything holds together in Jesus Christ. And he goes on at the end of this paragraph, and he just tells the story of grace. He says, for God was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in Christ and through Christ to reconcile to himself all things by making peace through his blood shed on a cross. Tonight we have a story about a controversial treatment for cancer invented by a Winnipeg doctor. It's not new. In fact, Dr. John Davidson used it on hundreds of patients decades ago. What is new is that some 50 years after the doctor's death, more than half a century after his theories were dismissed as quackery, scientists are rekindling the flame of his research. With more on the legendary cancer doctor, here's CTV's medical specialist, Avis Favreau. His name was John Ralston Davidson, a respected family doctor in Winnipeg in the early 1900s. A great scientist, as well as a great doctor. And this is Leslie Gurney Bishop, now 88, a journalist who documented Dr. Davidson's controversial treatment for cancer. He never claimed that it cured it, but he said it would arrest it. Davidson spent years studying cancer, writing medical articles on his theories, which in hindsight were remarkable for his time. 
The doctor described cancer as a dietary deficiency, so he added generous amounts of vitamins to the patient's diet. But he also said it was critical to boost the patient's own defenses against cancer, which is why he developed what he called young tissue extract. Davidson took fertilized hen's eggs just nine days old and produced a powdered extract, which was then injected into patients with various forms of terminal cancer. Like this boy, diagnosed with lymphatic cancer, notes show that with surgery, vitamins, and the extract, he returned to normal health. Over the years, Dr. Davidson treated hundreds of cancer patients. They all said, the ones I interviewed, all said that it had benefited them tremendously. Some said they were cured. Ruth Burke's father was one of Davidson's more famous patients. Harry Leader, the Member of Parliament for Portage La Prairie, had been diagnosed with terminal bowel cancer by the Mayo Clinic in the U.S. But under Davidson's treatment, he improved. It was controversial scientifically, but that really didn't affect Dad. He, he believed in it. But Davidson's medical colleagues thought the treatment was useless and repeatedly refused him research money. It's as though they'd been instructed by somebody, well, just uh, tear him up, you know, just tear him up. And they did. Frustrated with the lack of support, Harry Leader, with his own good health as proof, took Davidson's pleas for funding straight to Ottawa in 1944, directly to Prime Minister Mackenzie King. He never wanted any publicity from this. He simply wanted help for this man whom he felt could help humanity. The Prime Minister refused to fund Davidson's work. The doctor died four years later. He would die uh, pretty well of a broken heart, if you know what I mean, because he had not been recognized. His cancer treatment thought to have died with him. But then six years ago, the treatment was rediscovered by a Toronto company. It hired researchers at Dalhousie University to test the theory. Could these embryonic chicken cells really be a cancer treatment? When research began, there was excitement. Davidson's extract, in many ways, could be a cancer vaccine. In three studies on mice, the compound apparently shrunk tumors. We have to be careful about raising people's hopes falsely. Jonathan Blay is one of the researchers looking at the revived young tissue extract. Davidson's extract, in many ways, could be a cancer vaccine. There could be things in the extract that promote a response against the cancer. But then suddenly, the research stopped. The then owners of the extract had financial problems. They stopped paying the researchers. Dalhousie was out some $60,000 and halted the experiments. The university would be interested in continuing the work because the results were very promising. But for nearly five years now, the capsules have simply laid on the shelf. One could easily walk away from and say, to heck with it. But would we be leaving behind something that could potentially have significant impact for large numbers of people. But if there are no takers soon, the venture will die. A darn shame, says Dr. Bain, because we still won't have the answer. Was Dr. Davidson right? But if Dr. Davidson's extract does show the power to combat cancer... This could be not only one of the great human victories in overcoming disease, but it could also be one of the great human tragedies. A tragedy because for the last 50 years, a possible cancer treatment and its pioneer were forgotten. Avis Favreau, CTV News, Toronto.